One of the many things that Super Mario Bros. Wonder introduced to 2D Mario games is playable background and foreground segments. Although this is nothing new for 2D platformers as a whole, this is the first game I've modded that has this feature. So I thought today, why not have a look at how these background segments are implemented behind the scenes and see what crazy stuff we can discover along the way. So you may be aware that the first background segment in the game isn't even in the background, it's a foreground section that appears during the first level's wonder effect. So I guess we can start our investigation there. Let's open up 1-1 in the Fushigi level editor and... huh, where is it? Well, it doesn't take a genius to realize that this here is actually not a part of the main level internally, although it might look like it is. This is actually a separate area, and thus a separate file. Okay, but then what determines that this area appears in the foreground of the main area? Well, for that we actually have to scroll all the way to the end of the level, where you'll find this background area locator object. The reason this is all the way at the end of the level, when it appears halfway through in-game, is because of how the game's scrolling works. Objects in the foreground scroll faster, so by the time you're halfway through the level, an entire level's worth of foreground objects have already scrolled past, including the background area locator object. Anyways, how do I know that this object is actually what determines the position of this section? Well, let's mess around with it and see if things change. Here, I'll just resize the object a bit, let's see what that's going to look like in-game. <laughs> yes, okay, so that's the funny thing about these background area locator objects. They render the area to perfectly fit within the size of the object, meaning things will get squished if the aspect ratios don't match. Anyways, we now know that it's this background area locator object that determines where background segments appear, and looking in other levels also confirms this. But I have another question that needs answering. How come the game knows to render this area here specifically when there are also other areas in the first level that just appear as separate segments? This one was actually quite confusing to figure out. Most levels in the game create links between each background area locator and the camera area of the area that they need to display. This stuff is quite easy to keep track of and change. But the weird thing to figure out is that 1-1 doesn't do this. This background area locator doesn't have any associated data, and yet somehow the game knows to display the level's third sub-area using this object. As it turns out, this is all determined by this level's area parameters. Background level segments have an area parameter called background area type, which for 1-1 is set to normal. This parameter actually determines whether moving around in the background area scrolls the camera, since for some of the other level segments it's set to with scroll. So let's, just for fun, see what happens if I remove that parameter from this area and add it to one of the level's other areas instead. And there we go! So as it turns out, the game looks for the existence of this parameter to determine which area should be placed using a background area locator. The only reason most of the game's other levels use links for this is that those have multiple background areas in one level, so the game needs some way of distinguishing the multiple areas that have that parameter. After a bit more finagling, I also managed to get this underground sub-area to actually function properly. Let's just ignore the water and some other weird stuff. By the way, the fact that we remove that parameter from the original foreground area means it now has turned into a completely separate sub-area. This also shows an interesting difference between sub-areas and background areas, which is that now the wonder effect gets disabled once I go here, whereas usually, of course, it keeps going. Working on this background stuff also helped me realize another interesting thing, which is that the perspective of these background sections is completely faked. So you know how in real life, the further things are from you, the smaller they get? Well, no matter how far I put one of these background areas away in the background, their size remains the same. The fact that they usually appear smaller is because the developers actually manually resize these sections to appear smaller, or in the case of foreground areas, bigger. Like in the case of this underground section, I made the background area locator object twice as small as the camera area object it renders. This is because Super Mario Bros. Wonder actually uses an orthographic perspective for every element in the level, even the backgrounds. This means all 3D models are rendered as completely flat objects with no perspective shifts. The parallax scrolling only comes from pre-programmed scroll speeds that are determined by an object's layer. You might think, well of course, isn't that how every 2D Mario game works? But no, New Super Mario Bros. U for example has fully 3D model backgrounds. If anything, Super Mario Bros. Wonder's backgrounds have more in common with classic sprite-based games, which I suppose is fitting given how cartoony Super Mario Bros. Wonder is. 
Anyways, let's try to get back on track. Remember my first custom Super Mario Bros. Wonder level I made last month? Well, that has a sub area, so I suppose we might as well try making that a background area to see if we can apply what we've learned to an original level. For some reason, Fushigi doesn't want to open that level, so I guess we have to resort to once again editing the level as a text file. I added a background area locator object to the main area and changed the area parameters of the sub area to make it a background area. Let's see what that's going to look like now. Oh, <laughs> Um, seems like I maybe didn't set the layer of the background area located properly. Well, this looks funny. When we actually enter the area, well, we can't see a thing. Let's see if we can still grab the Wonder Flower. Uh, oh. Okay, so apparently Wonder Flowers teleport you somewhere outside of the level and instantly kill you if you grab them in a background area. Well, I suppose that means there's not really a reason to fix any of this then. It's a bit of a lost cause. Okay, so now we've moved, resized, and even created a brand new background area locator. But one more thing I wanted to try was rotating one of these objects. What's that going to look like in-game? Well, as it turns out, that doesn't do anything. It seems like the rotation of this object is completely ignored by the game's code. That does remind me that there's that wonder effect that rotates the level in Brawl 4 that I've actually never messed with. Maybe that's something I'll look into for a future video. Because, speaking of which, yeah, I think we've done enough for today's video. If you'd like to learn more about Super Mario Bros. Wonder Modding, or want to follow along with the development of the Fushigi level editor, I'd suggest joining the Wonderland Discord server, for which there is an invite link in the description. Another thing I'd appreciate you doing is subscribing to my channel, and commenting on the video, and leaving a like, and blah blah blah. Thank you guys so much for watching, see you later, and bye bye